Good evening. Welcome back and thank you for joining us once again. I hope you're still doing okay as we continue to respond to the coronavirus and pandemic that is in our midst. I hope you were able to connect with your church family in the celebration of Eucharist this weekend. How great a gift it is for us to be able to be connected to each other, albeit virtually. Such modern technology is one of the gifts that has come to the fore in these days, and I am sure it will continue to have a very large footprint in our future. As things begin to open up again and we move forward in the attempt to reorder our lives, this is a time that calls for great caution. People are returning to work, stores are opening, parks and recreation spaces are reopening, reopening, and the demands of these experiences puts enormous pressure on family systems. There's a sense of fatigue among people following this period of social distancing and a natural tendency to not be as alert as we have been these past two months. This being Memorial Day weekend brings its own questions and worries. Will people really take seriously the directives that have been put in place for social distancing and flattening the curve? The evidence provided thus far is not very promising and the last thing we need at this time is a resurgence of this coronavirus while we are still without a vaccine. So this time of re-engagement is extremely important. It's a time of taking care of ourselves and a time for taking care of the health and well-being of others. Let us pray. Lord God, we ask you to continue your guidance and assistance in these special days as we attempt to restore a semblance of normally, normalcy to our lives. Help us to be attentive to you and to your directives, and please keep us attentive also to the prescriptions and guidelines that are set down by our leaders. May we not be self-serving in terms of our approach, but rather may we be attentive to the best practices for ourselves, our families, and for all of your people. We ask this in Christ our Lord. This evening we continue with the central theme that we have been following for 10 days or more now. It is the theme of now is our time to appreciate, especially regarding Eucharist. This is a time for us to really appreciate the gift he has given us. The reason this is such a great time for us to look seriously and closely at the gift of Eucharist is because that obligation to be there in person has been lifted for now. I certainly understand you are missing that great gift of receiving his body and blood, but be assured we will return to our gatherings when we have the best practices in place. This is a special opportunity for us to trust the promise of Jesus, that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Mark chapter 2. How important is that declaration of the Master? How important was it then as he tried to give testimony to the stubbornness and rigidity of the Pharisees? It was important then, and it's especially important for us now. It is abundantly clear what the Master is saying. He is not advocating that breaking the law is okay. He is saying that worship of him, our one true God, is the ultimate goal. In this present time of crisis, the Church in its wisdom has lifted the obligation to attend the Eucharist in person. However, the Church has not or cannot lift the responsibility to honor the Creator. The invitation to honor and worship the Creator is even more significant at times like this in the coronavirus and pandemic. Thus, our use of social media is ex of extraordinary importance. The use of our website, YouTube, Facebook, email, phone, and all other media at our disposal is invaluable. These are tools of our modern day 
that provide an excellent opportunity for the proclamation of the gospel and the good news to all the world. Remember yesterday's gospel, the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have taught and commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the world. How important are these words of the Master? This is a time of teaching, a time of making disciples, a time of witnessing, a time of reaching out, a time of getting in touch with brothers and sisters, especially those who are most vulnerable and in greatest need. This is a time for the good news to flourish. A time for us to live the Eucharist, which we proclaim and celebrate every time we assemble as community. This period is an opportunity for the Eucharist to attain its full meaning in our lives. A time for us to appreciate that the Eucharist is not just about me and Jesus, but about all of us. All of us being gathered by him at his invitation to come forth from our homes and be nurtured by him and his word, and to be strengthened by his food, his own body and blood, and to be sent forth to proclaim and to teach his good news, that he is with us always to the end of the world. He is with us in the midst of this pandemic. Now how great is that news to us. How awesome is that good news if we avail of the wonderful opportunity to proclaim it. I must acknowledge that you, our community, are doing some really awesome work of living out the Eucharist during this time of pandemic. It's so gratifying to see people driving up at all hours of the day to deliver food and supplies for our table of plenty. Your very generous donations to that project have made it a powerful expression of what it means to be Eucharistic community to our brothers and sisters beyond our boundaries. The attention of our First Friday br brunch group to providing meals and spiritual nourishment to our homebound parishioners and others in need is a real expression of the gospel. The emails, and in a very special way, the personal phone calls to fellow parishioners to pray with them and support and assist them with any needs whatsoever during this time of pande pandemic have been a powerful expression of Eucharistic community. Thank you to all who have engaged in that ministry. The service of our brother Knights of Columbus in reaching out to assist people with meals and to provide physical and manual labor for those in need is bringing the experience of Eucharist into full view. Just the past few days, we've had some senior parishioners who wanted to complete the survey which they had heard was on our website. Not having internet, one lady was unable to participate. A parishioner provided her the opportunity to do so by going to her home. He used his phone to assist her in completing the survey. And this same service has been provided by a number of good servants, either in person or over the phone. What a great ministry. What a great and wonderful response you have made to our survey. 312 households responded. That is way above the average response rate. Thank you. Your response is informing our decisions regarding appropriate re-engagement. I understand that people are pining and longing for participation in Eucharist. That is certainly to be expected given our upbringing and conditioning. But I say to you, this time of being absent from the physical gathering of the assembly in our church community has the potential to be the leaven of a whole new, richer, richer understanding of what it means to be Eucharistic community if we let it. So be not afraid. He is with us always to the end. Let us pray, Lord our God, during this time, 
of pandemic during this time when there's plenty of worry and anxiety and fear and doubt and questioning and wondering about when we assemble again and when we come back together again in various institutions and organizations, including the church. We ask you to be with us in a special way. May your guidance and wisdom instruct us. May the power of your Holy Spirit rest upon us so that we may make decisions that are understanding and that are full of wisdom and that are courageous and that are bold and that encourage us to be more and more in you. We ask this in Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for all you are doing and we will be back together at some time in the near future. We promise to keep you posted on all of that and all of the details. Uh, we are very serious about the issues surrounding our re-engagement and how to do it well, how to do it really well. So thank you and God bless you and continue to stay attuned with us.